Hello, a very lovely, lovely good evening from here in Chali and hope each one of you as always are absolutely fine, happy and in fine spirits. And we always pray to the Almighty to keep you absolutely fine, happy and always in full bloom and shower supreme success upon you. So on such note, we start a topic which happens to be pretty formidable, pretty important and pre pretty high voltage topic in fact. Uh, from the examination point of view of course we are talking about branch accounting so this is the topic which we are going to take up in this particular session and of course in many upcoming session because this happens to be a pretty long topic quite obviously when i said that it's an important formidable quite in-depth topic and pretty long one so it automatically means that you will have to pay a little bit more attention and one motivating factor for you is to pay extra attention towards this particular topic is that later on when you are going to move into your practical arena this is one chapter which you would need day in day out to have a sound knowledge of because you may face several transactions with respect to branches so we are going to start today branch accounting as i said this happens to be a pretty important topic and you will have to pay extra attention and uh, before we what we will come over to the fairer work let me actually give you an overview regarding the same so if i'm going to ask a very simple question of you what exactly we mean by branches so what will be your answer it looks pretty easy isn't it it looks a pretty innocent question actually if i'm going to ask you what is branches now sometimes it becomes very difficult to give the answer to it actually this is head office and let us say head office is located in city a correct so when we say branches, branches simply refers to what? So branches simply refers to, you can say that branch is a segment or it is an outlet. It is in segment, it is an outlet. Correct? Of the main segment that is head office and it is situated generally in a geographical area different from the one where the head office is located. So, if somebody would ask you and toss up a question, what do you mean by branches? So, you should be in a position to give a very crisp reply that branches simply refers to what we call segment or outposts or extensions of the main office that is head office and generally such segments, outposts or extensions operate in a geographical area other than the one where the head office or the main office is situated. Correct? So, there the, the is branches and we presume that there is a branch it is situated in city B. So, it looks very innocuous question, isn't it? And uh, if I am going to ask you why and why a head office actually opens the branches. So, you should be in a, a position to give me the answer. And in fact, within a flick of a second, you should give me the answer. The reason is very simple. This is head office, correct? This is head office situated in Delhi. We are opening, let us say, branches in other cities. The simple reason is that we want to tap what we call greater market. We want to increase our sales turnover. We want to increase our clientele. And we want to make our presence felt in the other reasons. So quite obviously, quite obviously, the basic what we call idea is to increase the sale and to increase the turnover and profit. That is why branches are opened. Next question is, suppose I am going to ask why we need branch accounting. You can give me a very simple answer. So since actually we have opened a branch, so we need accounting for the same. That is one part of the game, no doubt about that, because we have opened several branches, let us say. So we need to keep track of those branches, whether each branch is performing up to our expectations or not, or whether the each branch is what we call uh, following the uh, policies of the head office or not whether each branch is having good turnover or not, whether each branch is earning profit or not. So all the more in order to track the what we call in performances, we need branch accounting. So these are the simple things. Now coming over to the other major side of this particular chapter, these, these are rough work and we don't require to write at this particular moment. Next, we come to the part types of branches. Actually, broadly speaking, branches are of two types. One we say domestic branches and another one is foreign branches. <clears throat> domestic branches are also known as inland branches. Inland branches. And these are foreign branches. Correct? As far as domestic and inland branches are covered, 
these are the two major broad what we call categories first of all one is domestic another one is foreign and if i am going to again ask of you a question what we mean by domestic or what we call inland branches you again should be in a position to deliver me the answer the answer is pretty sim simple to answer uh, such branches whose areas of operations are located within the domestic territory of a country are basically domestic branches or inland branches such branches whose areas of operations are located within the domestic territory of a nation are called domestic branches and needless to tell you what we mean by foreign branches <clears throat> such branches whose areas of operation actually are outside the domestic territories of foreign branches now as far as domestic branches is concerned domestic branches or inland branches as i said just a moment ago correct Domestic or inland branches, we will see later on that they are again classified into two types. One is dependent branches, dependent branches, and another one is independent branches, independent branches. What we mean by dependent, independent, you know better than I the meaning of this. <laughs> but in the context of the branch, when we say dependent branch, first of all, you should understand that dependent branches <clears throat> sorry domestic or inland branches are broadly classified or segregated into two types dependent branches and independent branches now what exactly the dependent branches first you need to know the meaning of dependence quite obviously you are dependent upon me for your supreme success in your accounts you can say that way out if you allow me to so similarly dependent branches are those branches which are completely and comprehensively dependent upon the head office and later on i am going to elaborate this particular meaning complete dependence complete dependence in what sort of form i said such branches which are completely dependent upon the head office are known as dependent branches we will see later on when i say they are completely dependent upon the head office it means the entire accounting of such branches will be done in the books of the head office number one all the goods will be supplied to these branches by the head office all the expenses of such branches will be met by the head office such branches are not allowed to do their do what we call sales of their own correct in fact they are guided by the policies of the head office to make the sales and secondly put it in simple words dependent branches are not allowed to take any independent decisions with respect to anything correct so all the major policy decisions are will vest in the hands of the head office and dependent branches are simply expected to follow those instructions those policies those norms of the main office head office and execute them to the best of their abilities and do as much as sales possible and then remit the total cash collected to the head office that is the basic idea of the dependent branches we will see later on elaborately as i said independent branches as the name itself is suggesting they are not dependent upon the head office generally they are large very large sized branches actually correct they do not depend upon the head office they have their own resource own capital they can do their own sales also and in fact Generally, we will see that in the branch account, it is the head office which supplies goods to the branches. But in case of independent branches, no doubt, even in case of independent branches, head office will supply the goods to the branch. But in spite of that, there is also a possibility that such branch may actually supply goods to the head office. Correct? And as the name itself is suggesting, they are independent. That means they are fully what we call at liberty to take their own decisions with respect to sales price operations product etc so they are given virtually a free hand and they follow double entry system to prepare their own accounts so as far as dependent major thing is which you need to keep in your mind is that under dependent branches branch is not going to prepare any account the entire accounting will be done by the head office whereas we will see later on that as far as independent branches are concerned here the branch will prepare their own account correct so after having a look over the in fact after having a bird's eye view of this particular chapter now we come to the main end so whatever i said actually as you know i have a habit of actually writing each and everything so now we move over to the other part first and then we will move further so branch accounting i simply put up a very simple question what we mean by branch correct point number one branches simply refers to 
or branch simply refers to simply refers to an extension an extension or a segment or an output outlet of a main office of a main office right in bracket head office of a main office main office here stands for head office so branches simply refers to an extension or segment or outlet of the main office and and generally situated and generally is situated and generally is situated in a different geographical territory in a different geographical area when i say in a different geographical area it means in an area which is other than the location of the head office correct next question i tossed before you why actually we need branch accounting of we are having branches we need branch accounting why branch accounting branch accounting refers to a system refers to a system refers to a system in which separate accounts are prepared for each branch in which separate account separate accounts separate accounts are prepared for each branch accounts are prepared for each branch correct for each branch to track to track the performances to track the performances of the branch to track the performance of the branch means we want to know whether each branch is operating what we call as per our expected lines or not whether we need what we call some remedial actions or not whether we need to continue with the branch or not whether we need to close it down or not so in order to track uh, such things we need branch accounting track the performance of the branch correct then types of branches types of branches as far as types of branches are concerned i told you as far as branch branches are concerned broadly they are categorized into two parts correct into two parts domestic domestic branches and foreign branches domestic branches domestic branches and foreign branches and foreign branches domestic branches are also known as inland branches inland branches i also told you what you mean by domestic branches domestic branches simply means such branches whose areas of operations are located or confined to the domestic territory so domestic branch or inland branches are those are those 
whose area of operations whose area of operations area of operations are confined confined means limited are confined to the domestic territory or within the domestic territory that is why such branches are known as inland branches domestic territory quite obviously foreign branches means such branches whose areas of operation exceed the domestic territory are those that are located outside india that are located outside domestic territories outside domestic territories these are the basic things which you need to know and mostly you are already aware of what such things now as far as domestic branches are concerned domestic branches are further divided into two types as i said a moment ago domestic branches domestic branches are further classified or subdivided into two types inland branches sorry dependent branches and independent branches isn't it or not domestic branches now we are concentrating at this particular moment because domestic branches covers the major part of the chapter domestic branches one dependent branches dependent branches and another one is independent branches independent branches now we will first cover up dependent branches what we mean by dependent branches correct dependent branches now we will take up just a moment ago when i started off with the chapter in the overview i did tell you that dependent branches as the name is suggesting are dependent upon the head office dependent branches now you write a little bit about it dependent branches as the name suggests as the name as the name suggests as the name suggests are completely dependent upon head office are completely are completely dependent upon head office are completely dependent upon head office now what does it mean dependent upon head office as i said earlier complete dependence reflect that all the major policy decisions with respect to the operations or the functional aspects of the branch will remain in the hands of the head office correct complete dependence here signifies complete dependence complete dependence comma here signifies signifies that a all the major policy decisions all the major policy decisions with respect to with respect to operational function shell west shell west in the hands of the head office shell west in the hands of the head office 
in the hands of the head office. H O head office. B. All the goods and services. All the goods required by branch shall be supplied by head office. That means branch will not be allowed to purchase the goods from outside. All the goods required by branch shall be supplied by head office. Shall be supplied by head office. Similarly, let us say branch is operating in a city and we have taken the premises over there on rent. So quite obviously, there are several expenses with respect to what we call branch like rent, like insurance of the building, like salaries of the staff, like wages of the what we call general laborers. Correct? So for such expenses, the head office will send the cash to the branch. In other words, when head office is, is sending the cash, for the expenses which which are being incurred by the branch indirectly it means all the expenses are being borne by the head office isn't it so that is why we shall write that all the expenses of the branch shall be met by the head office all the expenses all the expenses of the branch all the expenses of the branch shall be met by shall be met by head office so if all the what we call decision major policy decisions are in the hands of the head office all the goods required by the branch will be supplied by the head office all the expenses of the branch will be met by the head office then what branch is supposed to do branch manager or simply branch is simply expect it to execute the what we call instructions which are being actually forwarded to them by the head office and do as much as sales collect the cash and send back it to what we call head office branch is simply expected to branch is simply expected branch is simply expected Branch is simply expected to execute to execute all the policy decisions all the policies decisions of the head office of the head office correct to the best of their ability to the best of their ability do as much as sales do as much as sales collect cash and remit the same to the head office and remit the same to the head office so branch manager or simply branch is expected to execute and implement all those policies which are being what we call given or forwarded to them by the head office or whatever instructions head office is releasing Correct to the best of their abilities, they should actually execute them and do as much as sales, quite obviously, and collect the cash and then whatever collections are there, simply remit it back to the head office. So that is what for branch stands for, under dependent branches. Here, one thing I would love you to actually pay attention to. Just a moment ago, and in fact, right from the beginning of this particular chapter, I did tell that under dependent branches, it is the head office actually, uh, under dependent branches, it is the head office which is going to actually play all the cards. Correct? That with all the rights, all the decision framing things are in the hands of the head office. But 
Regarding one area, little bit of freedom is given to the branch. For example, branch manager will be given little bit of freedom with respect to what we call sales. For example, he may be allowed to actually give the discount. Are you getting my point or not? For example, there is a branch and suddenly he finds a very big customer and he's interested in what we call buying lots of goods, but at the same time, he's demanding little bit of discount. So branch can provide the discount of its own for that they need not require to ask from the head office. That means little bit of freedom is given to the branch manager or simply the branch to have little bit of their sales policy. Are you getting my point or not? So otherwise all the major decisions will be in the heads of the head office. So regarding dependent branches, you have come one important aspect that under dependent branches, we will see later on actually that entire accounting will be done in the books of the head office. Correct? Entire accounting, entire accounting with respect to branch, with respect to branch, with respect to branch shall be done in the books of head office shall be done in the books of head office in the books of head office so entire accounting will be done in the books of the head office that is the important point after having gone through dependent branches remember one thing now dependent branches will continue. We will see later on that under dependent branches, we will find different types of accounting systems, correct? So accounting systems under dependent branches. Accounting systems. Accounting systems under dependent branches under dependent branches so under dependent branches now you know the meaning of dependent branches we will find that there are different accounting systems correct one is known as data system one is known as data system then we will see the stock and data system the stock and data system a stock and data system and then there will be wholesale branch system wholesale branch system that is branch final account system branch final account system branch final accounts also you can say some people actually keep branch final accounts as a separate category no problem basically we will see that there are several systems and prominent among them is data system stock and data system and wholesale branch system as far as under dependent branches accounting systems are concerned now i will take a rough sheet to make you understand actually what we mean by these systems first first question as a student which should strike in your mind actually why we need so many accounting system have you thought it for a while why we need actually so many accounting systems why we need so many accounting system i just told actually under dependent branches there is data system stock and data system and wholesale branch system why need why we need so many systems ultimate target of course is to know how much profit or loss is being earned by the branch and for the same we have framed in fact we have means the accountants have framed actually three systems three or four systems you may call it data system stock and data system wholesale branch system correct so the point here is that why we need so many accounting systems before i answer you this particular question i will ask you one question have you have traveled so many time by trains or flight correct some of you might have traveled to flights 
some of you might have traveled through trains. You must have seen actually over there. There are lots of classes. There is general class, there is sleeper class, there is AC class. Isn't it similarly what we call in, in case of flights, we'll find actually there is premium class, there is VIP class, there is economy class, etc. Now the question is actually, why so many classes are there? If I'm going to ask you this particular question, I'm very, very sure that each one of you will be able to deliver me the answer very quickly. Because we simply cannot follow one system. Reason being is very, very clear. If we will have one rigid fair, then it will sometime be possible that those who are having what we call enough amount of money to travel, they will travel. And at the same time, people like me and people who are not having much money or who belong to lower strata or lower section of the society, it will be almost injustice for them because they will not be able to afford. So that is the reason in order to make feel that society is being taken care of, government of a nation generally go for different classes of fares so that each section of the society can afford it and can travel. That is the main reason. Are you getting my point or not? So you must have seen actually, we simply cannot have one system of fare. Similar is the case with the accounting. Many organizations are very big organizations. Some are of medium sized organization and some are of micro or micro level or small level organizations. That is the reason we simply cannot have one accounting system which will apply to all the organizations. Suppose actually we will have simply one accounting system, correct? Simply one accounting system. I do not know whether you are aware of this or not. In, even in, suppose I'm having an organization and in order to know the results of my opera, operations, I need to follow some accounting system. But in order to implement an accounting system itself, that is a very heavy task. Sometimes, some, sometime it is too costly to, to be afforded. Are you getting my point or not? So that is the reason actually we have three accounting system. We have developed three accounting systems so that each type of organization can afford a particular accounting system and accordingly can do their accounting and assess the performance of the branches. That is the reason. First of all, being a student, you need to know actually why there are so many accounting systems. So three accounting systems, I told you, you can call it four also because we will combine these two systems. Otherwise, you can keep it as a separate category, branch final system. So what is data system, what is stock and data system, what is wholesale branch system? We will take them one by one. So first we will start off with data system. What is data system? We will see later on. Many a student I have seen, they are simply interested in solving the questions. Correct? I have seen people like a study, somebody will come and simply prepare a format, will write some item here and here and simply will tell you that is how the profits will what we call computed people will become very happy we have got the profit but you do not know when tomorrow when you are going to enter into your practical arena you will have to face the interview what sort of questions you are going to face i will also talk about those questions and that is the reason why i'm trying to tell you actually even such things correct even such things are asked in the question why so many accounting systems are there and if we haven't gone through it then over there, facing the interview board, we find ourselves virtually at sea. So that is the reason, being a professional student, you need to actually put up a little bit efforts. Be patient, we will cover up all the aspect. Nearly 100 questions we are going to do in the class itself, in, correct? So just pay attention first of all. Let me actually put up some ingredients of conceptuality so that later on you should not face any problem. What is data system then we are talking about? At least you should be in a position to let me know that data system belongs to a system which falls under the category of dependent branches. Because we are analyzing only dependent branches. I said that under dependent branches, we are going to confront actually three types of accounting system. And one among them happens to be data system. So data system, at least you can say it is a part of dependent branches. We will see that and many, many among us do not know that it is not a full-fledged double entry system. 
That means it is not a full fledged double entry system. Why I am saying so? It is not a full fledged double entry system because later on we will see that under this system, head office with respect to branch, head office with respect to branch will maintain. I have already told you earlier that under dependent branches, entire accounting is done in the books of the head office. Data system is a part of dependent branches. So uh, under this system, we will see that, of course, accounting is being done in the books of the head office. And we will see that head office in its book will make one branch account and will maintain only one ledger, sales ledger. Sales ledger with respect to branch. The entire accounting will be done in the books of the head office. And head office shall make or prepare one branch account with respect to the branch and shall maintain only one sales ledger, only one sales ledger. Do you know the meaning of sales ledger? Tell me, very honest, be honest to yourself. And sometimes it is very tricky job. We become honest to others so easily. But to be honest to oneself is the most, what we call, toughest task in this human world. So be honest, listen to your inner voice, tell me. The answer, I know most of you are telling no sir. Sales ledger when we say it means accounts of credit customer. Accounts of credit customer. Accounts of credit customer. First of all, being a professional student, you should know such things. When we say head office is maintaining the branch account and a sales ledger, indirectly it means head office is maintaining branch account and all the data's account, all the date, all the data's in accounts, data's is also known as customers. In accounts, data's stands for customers or customers stands for data's, correct? Because sales ledger means accounts of credit customer and credit customers means data's. Is it clear to you? In other words, head office is simply maintaining a branch account and data's account when i say data's that means all the credit customers are you getting my point so that is why the name of this system is data system is it clear to you or not so what is data system now you let me know first point what did i tell what did i tell you it belongs to dependent branches Number one, it's an incomplete accounting system. It is not a proper accounting system. Why it is not a proper accounting system? The reason being is very simple because here the head office with respect to branch is maintaining only one branch account and only data's account. Actually, in accounting jargon, we call it sales ledger. But for simplicities, I will simply call it head office uh, will maintain only branch account and data's account. Data's account itself means only the sales ledger. Is it clear to you or not? So, at least you have come to know that data system, this is the most important major and major point in this entire discussion that here the head office is maintaining only branch account and data's account, number one. Number two, it is an incomplete accounting system because now you know that it is not a proper accounting system, not a complete accounting system because in order to have a complete accounting system, we need lots of money. And because it is a small organization, in fact, I forgot to tell you that this system is followed by organizations which are having very small level of operations. Correct? Let us say head office is in Delhi and branch is very nearby. Let us say in Mathura or Hapur, which are nearby areas. Is it clear to you? So we are having, it's, it's a small sort of what we call branch, you can say. So only a small organization follow or micro level organizations follow this system because they simply cannot afford to have a full fledged double entry system which require huge amount of money. So <clears throat> this system is followed by small organization. It's an incomplete accounting system under this system head office with respect to branch shall maintain only what we call branch account and a sales ledger that is accounts of credit customer or in simple words account, or accounts of all the data. That is the reason we will see that under data system in the books of head office, we will prepare branch account and we will prepare data's account. We will not prepare data's account separately of all the customer. It will become impossible. In fact, we will club all the data's into one. Is it clear to you? So that is the basic idea of this particular uh, what we call system. 
Obviously, we will elaborate upon it later on, but in the upcoming session. So till then, it's a short goodbye. And in the upcoming session, we will have a lot to talk about. We will definitely analyze in a very threadbare manner all the intricacies of this chapter. And without any doubt, we take pride in giving you the most what we call prolific knowledge and in-depth one. I hope you would agree, agree to it. Quite obviously, we are always awaiting with bated breath to have your feedback. So on such count, we are closing down this particular session. But in the upcoming one, as I said, we are going to actually not only do this one, we will do some what we call problems also. So till then, it's goodbye.